Uh, so without further ado, we will start with uh, Yashu Ho. So uh, Yashu will be talking about her chapter, uh, which is called Contesting the Vulgar Hand My Performance of a, uh, sorry, from a Quiet Show. You can definitely correct me on that later. And <laughs> might not be, that might not be the right pronunciation. But yeah, uh, and then it's called Online Vigil Vigilantism Toward Chinese Underclass Use on Social Media Platforms. So, so before going ahead, I wanted to quickly tell you about Yashi a bit more. So Yashi is a PhD candidate at the Graduate School of Interdisciplinary Information Studies at the University of Tokyo. Uh, her research centers on investigating the intricate relationship between digital technology and its social context, especially on how various digital media platforms contribute to the social class stratification process particularly in Asian societies. So uh, she's also working on an independent documentary at the moment. Um, and this documentary has a focus on the living conditions of young Chinese migrant workers as well. So yeah, she will, you can go ahead if you want, the floor is completely yours. Thank you. Hello everyone, can, can you hear me and see the, my, my share of my screen? Okay, thank you very much for coming to this event. And I am Jiaxi Ho from, as Laura just said, from the University of Tokyo. I would love to share some vigilant practices I observe in the Chinese cyberspace. Um, in my study, which is the chapter three of the, the book, in, uh, Introducing Vigilant Audiences, I focus on a specific uh, vocal performance popular among the underclass Chinese youth. And the features of this performance triggered um, collective denunciations among the general public toward this uh, marginal social group. And this kind of performance is named as Hamai, uh, literally it means mm, shouting with a microphone. The screenshot I put on the left is, um, is what a typical Hamai video looks like. Uh, usually the performer sits in front of the webcam and holding a microphone and he or she will just read out some pre-written rhymed lyrics along with the rhythmic background music. And for, um, for many unfamiliar viewers of Hanmai, they will find the genre sharing a lot in common with African-American hip hop rap at first glance. However, I have to note the differences between Hanmai and Chinese hip hop rapping um, because the latter is pretty um, consistent with the global hip hop culture. Uh, though most of the rappers, they actually rap in the Chinese language, but many of them actually follow the global trend in music flows, in dressing styles, and many of them were are uh, highly visible in the mainstream entertainment industry. While for Hamai rappers, they usually look um, kind of unsophisticated and sometimes strange or or rustic. Um, and some of them um, only share their performance, and many of them only share their performance on the underclass centric social media platforms, such as Kuai Shou. Um, the most significant difference might be the audience. Like fans of Chinese hip hop rap are usually urban, middle class, educated young people, while Hamai lovers are composed of a variety of uh, marginal social groups, such as young rural migrant walkers. And being a genre um, created by the underclass youth, many Hamai works uh, ex actually express the yearning uh, of the underclass for social mobility and their critiques about existing social inequalities. And um, many of these denunciations were far from actually being politically dissident because they usually target on some like fictional social elites or rhetoric authorities. For example, in MC Tixing's work, Buddha says, he cleverly appropriates the image of Monkey King to speak out the powerlessness of the underclass and intentionally neglecting the, the common perception of Monkey King as an adorable and a very, um, very capable national hero. Um, before, Actually, before 2017 or even 2018, Hamai rap was basically some self-entertainment within underclass youth themselves. And when the genre got more and more like visible online, the, the vigilant audiences, mostly composed of middle-class internet users, were offended by the visibility and the vulgarity of the underclass in the virtual space. So they used a variety of practices 
such as shaming and humiliation and denunciations to disparage the Hamai creators and viewers. And by cri criticizing the Volga Hamai as an inferior, as a laughable and decultured other, the sense of a superior middle classness uh, is reinforced among these internet users. And um, the middle class user generated denunciation targeting on Hamai also triggered the state intervention. In April 2018, in particular, the state temporarily cracked down Kuai Shou, uh, this social media platform where Hamai community highly depended on. And after being penalized, Hamai gradually disappeared from a genre with tens of thousands of updates every day to almost nothing, like no one performing, no videos being shared, and no more public discussions about whether Hamai is vulgar or, or whether they deserve denunciation or not. So what I found most interesting when tracing the rise and fall of underclass Hamai rap is that first, vigilant practices were conducted targeting a social group rather than an a specific individual. And these practices were motivated by a variety of value judgments that were especially meaningful in constructing one's social class identities in contemporary China. And second, um, the state, the platform and the users were positioned in a very asymmetric power structure where either middle class or underclass users could hardly uh, negotiate with the state or with the social media platform. Yeah, I, I would like to say that it might be oversimplified if we just interpret the fade out of Hamai as totally as a as a totally outcome of the state censorship um, uh, as they to try to em eliminate uh, the underclass voice from the online uh, the, the the Chinese online sphere. And actually, Hamai is never the main target of the state surveillance and it disappeared with many other controversial or offensive content or the content that is tagged by vulgarity. And I, I would say that on the one hand, uh, because of the state, uh, the requirements from the state, uh, all the social media platforms in China, they need to conduct more like careful content, uh, content moderation, just like the global social media platforms. Do. And but on the other hand, the criteria for what is being harmful or what is being vulgar are never actually articulated in the Chinese public space. And more importantly, I want I want to say that the underclass centric social media platforms, such as Kuai Shou, in this specific case, actually largely transformed this architectural structure ever since 2018. And now it changed from a social media platform facilitating mainly the spread of uh, short, uh, short videos to a live streaming and e-commerce platform. And underclass users are more expected to be a self-employed live streamer and entrepreneur to use this technological tool to, to market various products and, and, and so, so as to overcome poverty. And so rather than saying Hamai was forcefully muted, uh, I would say that it might be better to say the attention and usage of underclass users are, are, are redirected and disciplined from self-expression through Hamai rap. Um, yeah, so even though one, uh, maybe we can still find some re-emergence of Hamai works, um, they, I, I want to say that they are no longer significant in the Chinese public space as a, as a, as a very important expression of the underclass uh, Chinese younger people.